creative work, the, the idea of, of rectangles or diamonds being respected as, as members, you know, maybe geography is important to think about, and it is a good idea to divide between neighboring CUDs. Um, it's just interesting that it's never come up before. And so, I, you know, I don't know if it's a policy thing that we want to talk about, but that's not the kind of situation where we divide. That's not a geography issue. That's all. I just so I'm wondering about Roxbury in the context of the discussion of Washington, and, that, and that, whether that, that maybe has come up in conversation Elmore in or Wolcott or any other town that sort of kind of belongs in more than one CUD. We should think about them that way. So a couple updates in that respect. I, I have sort of informally heard from EC Fiber that they they may be interested in building in Roxbury as well. Which again, you know, as long as somebody's building fiber and they're actually serving. The people there, then our, our mission is is achieved, and that's kind of what I was saying to the folks in in Washington that you know they're 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 going to be fine whoever whoever they they go with or just have a, a different board to deal with. Uh, Montpelier City Council has it on their agenda in August to um, uh, leave EC Fiber and and stay with just us. Uh, Northeast Kingdom Community Broadband has talked about the possibility of um, Elmore, particularly to service that far northwestern corner that's not really, you can't get there from here. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's probably gonna happen more and more as we end up end with you know Vermont towns across the state that have a ridge going right through the middle. And if you happen to be you know contiguous with another CUD that can serve that better, yeah, well, I, I'm personally, personally I say, why not? Uh, Siobhan, you had your hand up. I was just going to say that that would make us 20, right? And we had said 22, is what we were thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to, so on, on that other stuff, it makes sense to me to divide towns up if they're willing to do it and they're willing to be served in that way. <clears throat> I mean, fire departments build on both sides of the ridge. There's some little town I was just, I, I'm doing some stuff for f fire gear ordering and I'm like, this town's big enough for two fire departments. And the guy said, well, it's because there's this ridge right in the middle. So they've got one on both sides. It's the same kind of idea that it kind of makes sense to, to do it like that, I, I think. Um, and so w w one of the other things that I, that I thought about um, was, well, we have a feasibility study for 18 towns. We don't have a feasibility study for 20 towns. And I asked Fred, I said, so what would it take for you to go back and sort of retroactively look back, update the feasibility study and business plan to incorporate um, Washington and Duxbury. <clears throat> he said he could probably do that for, for $5,000. So we could um, we, we could uh, approve the spending of that money as part of the, you know, the $100,000 that we're looking at um, and go from there. Um, alternatively, so on, on a unrelated note, the Vermont Community Foundation uh, is writing checks to all the CUDs with grants. Ten thousand dollars. Here, here you go. Didn't. There's no reporting requirement. Uh, I didn't apply for it. They said Take here, fill f fill this out. And I was like, well, wait, what is this about? And then I I heard more from the public service department, but they're literally just writing ten thousand dollar checks to all the CUDs. I love they that. They indicated that they were considering that. When, when I spoke to them a few months ago and, and they said, um, you know, you guys are pretty far along, so we haven't decided if we would include everybody, but, you know, it's obviously going to more help the early stage folks, but the fact they're right. applying it across the board is, is great. Jeremy, uh, this is Henry. Uh, I wanted to mention that when I got rejected with for my big grant, I said, so how would I have gotten that approved? And he basically, he said, well, if you had applied to join uh, CV Fiber. And, and then he went on to say that CV Fiber should provide a, a big grant to cover the feasibility and business plan part of Duxbury. And that that would likely be funded because they, had, they couldn't get rid of all the money. There's leftover money and you know, that's not good. So um, I, you know, if you could take my feasibility, uh, my 
my application with all my data and then uh, adapt that I, and I've sent that to you. So it, it wouldn't be like you'd have to start from scratch. And, um, you know, just an idea. They haven't issued the, R, the new RFP yet, but um, if you wanted to do that, that's an option. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I, just I, real I, quick. What, what, what was that organization again, Henry? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed it. The Broadband Innovation Grant Program. Okay from the Department of Public Service. So um, the thing that would be, that I would want to know about this is it would be the timing. So when is the next, you know, when is the next block of funds available from the PSD? Because like I met, just mentioned, Henry, we just got a $10,000 grant that we didn't ask for. Our, our consultant is asking for $5,000 to add Washington and Duxbury. I think, I mean, I think we could probably go back and apply for another one later if we had a reason to. But I, honestly, I think we're good. Uh, I'm personally, I, I know it's required for what we're doing here, but I'm I'm allergic to paperwork, um, and it appears that we have uh, dodged a bullet in that respect. Okay, um, and then with you on that, having been recently been through the pain. <laughs> <laughs> one so, question: um, Does does this run afoul does this discussion of splitting up towns run afoul in any way of art off i don't we need to be I, very careful about those discussions while bidding is going on um maybe i, so. I mean i mean it, it would depend on what we're talking about i mean we're we're not talking about you know bidding areas or anything like that we're just talking about how we're going to you know how we're going to manage you know a town being a part of both districts so um okay. just in, in in the interest of moving things forward maybe let's let's answer some of the early questions first um i'm going to move that we approve washington and duxbury's application to join cv fiber second second <laughs> looks like i got it i got it I, I heard Chuck oh, first. I heard, oh, Chuck, I heard, first. I heard Chuck first. My stupid internet. Sorry, Siobhan. <laughs> Chuck's a cheater. All right. <laughs> Chuck's got pretty slow internet too. <laughs> All right. So, so we, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion about whether we should uh, accept Washington and Duxbury into the district? We wanted them to, and they've agreed. It's wonderful. Agreed. Uh, looks like uh, Andy Gilbert has a, a question. Uh, which CUD is Walden in? I think that's in Northeast. Is that Northeast Kingdom? No. Michael, do you know, yeah, David? They have, not, they have not joined a CUD. Oh, that's they're right. They're really on the map. They're, to considering, there. They're, considering, they're considering us. They're considering um, the Northeast Kingdom. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, so Andy, if you have any sort of inside peek into that whatever you know let us let us know yeah i just wouldn't want them to be left out as we're starting to you know you're starting to fill out the map and then whatever so um, i'll ping somebody i know who's there um and see what yeah i'll ping laura, laura. Yeah. So, okay on that um Michael. there's a white board member who lives in walden is keen to make it a good decision and um so that will behoove them to figure it out soon in terms of what WEC wants to do. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy, uh, Andy, I'm happy to go to that select board meeting um, if they have any questions or if they want to be talked into it or talked out of it, whatever, I can, I can do that. Um, I would just say, mention to them the time sensitivity of this, that if they don't get in on this, we're going to be building and we're, we really can't we can't stop that train once once we get going and they're going to be would almost certainly be last but the one other like, thing yeah okay is there's a, a wex substation in walden which may key in very mm -hmm. well into our network design which fred recognized when he was planning interesting okay so any further discussion about washington and duxbury Okay, I'm not hearing um, any sort of agony over this. So if we can do the um, 
you know, we're going to, I'm going to assume that we have consensus unless anyone um, would object. We can, we can certainly do a roll call if, if you like. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that we'll, if I don't hear any protest that this motion is going to pass unanimously. We give everybody a chance to unmute if they want to protest. Okay, and I will declare the motion passed unanimously. And so Washington and Duxbury, welcome. So like I said, our Duxbury um, representative, now a voting member as of now, Henry Amistadi. Welcome, Henry. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If we could do maybe a, a quick uh, set of introductions, we can, um, we can all let Henry know who we are. Henry can let us know who he is. And I'm just going to go around my screen. So Henry, I'm not going to introduce myself because I think we've talked enough and um, you've, you've, you've certainly heard enough of my voice in the last week or two. Uh, Phil? Sure. Um, hi, Henry. Welcome aboard. Uh, Phil Hayek. I'm the delegate from Middlesex and vice chair of the board. Rama? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Rama Schneider. I'm not sure. I think I might still be an alternate from Williamstown, but it's been a while. Mostly I just want to sit and listen and catch up on what you guys are doing. Well, nobody's told me otherwise, Rama, so in, in my heart, at least, you're still the alternate. And you're still chair of the finance committee. There's that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Matt. I'm the alternate from Plainfield and the clerk. Yeah, this is uh, Andy. Sorry for the like impromptu video and everything, and welcome. And uh, I'm the delegate from Cabot. Yes, hi. Welcome. I'm Jerry Diamantides. I'm the alternate from Berlin and also on the Business Development Committee. Hi, Henry. I'm Alan Gilbert. <clears throat> I live in Worcester, and I'm the representative. Uh, Ray from Northfield, and I'm the delegate, and uh, my dermatologist is most happy to learn, being from Williamstown, that she was part of CV Fiber and can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chuck? <clears throat> Hey, Henry, I'm Chuck Bird. I'm your neighbor in Moortown, uh, and uh, I'm the delegate and chair of the Communications Committee. David? David Healy, delegate from the town of Callis and uh, co-chair of the Business Development Committee. Welcome aboard. <clears throat> Michael? It's Michael Birnbaum. Um, I'm wearing the yellow shirt. Um, I'm from Plainfield, delegate. Tom? Went to school at Goddard. Went to school at Goddard. Yeah. Hi, uh, Tom Fisher, uh, delegate for East Montpelier, and used to live in Duxbury before this, so glad to have him back on board. J uh, John Russell, I see you unmuted, John, but I can't hear you. John is our uh, alternate from Worcester. Uh, John Morris. Hi, Henry. I'm John Morris. I'm from Mark Field. I'm a delegate. Welcome aboard. Yeah, John, uh, Frank? <laughs> Frank Moore, delegate from Williamstown, Chief Information Officer at Norwich University. Uh-huh. Good. All right. Siobhan? Hi, I'm Siobhan. I'm from Orange and I'm a delegate. I'm also on the Business Development Committee um, and the Finance Committee, which hasn't met for a while. Is there anything else? All right. No, that's it. All right. And Henry? So um, I'm Henry Amistadi. I uh, recently retired from the MITRE Corporation, which is a research lab for the federal government. Um, this looks like see a few nodding heads. Um, been in IT there for 16 years. Been in software my whole life, um, and uh, kind of analytics and optimization, and um, performance engineering. So, in particular to this area, I've done a lot of performance testing of network systems, network appliances firewalls, proxy servers, uh, dark fiber, um, a, a lot of different things like that. And Miner had a 43 node network and we did engineering for exp 
expansion of that network and testing of that. My company is operations monitoring and analytics. So I'd be very interested in the operational monitoring for this whole network. And, um, you know, from a performance standpoint and from an end user monitoring standpoint to know what kind of latencies we have and um, what uh, the bandwidth actually is in these different locations, et cetera. But that's, um, the thing, that's in the future, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but I just want to give you a little bit of my background. Um, so basically, if you have data, um, I, I can gobble it up and love, love to uh, analyze data. So if you guys have needs like that, I can I can do that kind of stuff really well. Um, excuse me. Or on the done the CIO at Norwich, you and I need to talk. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, when I heard that, I thought that thought that too. I'm gonna yeah, talk also, on, also on the Vermont Vermont um, Artificial Intelligence Task Force. Um, and have made comments there and know some of those people. Well, and, when we vaccinated, you and I are going to have lunch. Okay. Not that far. <laughs> Pfizer just announced it at four o'clock today. They have it ready. Yep. All right. So, so okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, Frank, you're, you're, you're your uh, mic is uh, pretty pretty bad, so if uh, if you do want to pop on again, I, w I would recommend that headset that you were talking about before. So, <laughs> okay, so welcome, Henry. I think we all um, you know we'll all all appreciate you uh, you joining us and helping us with this uh, fairly heavy lift. Although we are getting some momentum now, thankfully. Um, I just want to on. mention one one other thing is that uh, I have. Um, a lot of um, census information uh, that we can use for feasibility studies if you don't already have it. And some of that's in my report, the Census for American... Uh, uh, American uh, Community Survey. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's okay. All right. Anyhow, go ahead. Two, two, right. gate, two data gates. Nice. I have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any any thoughts about um, um, having having uh, Brad go back and update for uh, Washington and Duxbury? I mean, is there any reason why why we shouldn't? I mean, five thousand dollars seems like a reasonable like a reasonable cost. Jeremy, right. this is Frank. Is this is any better? It's much better, Frank. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yes. I I would say go for it. And by the way, I'd like Henry's contact information if I can get it. We all do. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jeremy, well, one I, thing about be, moving be... that. One thing about having inner aisle, uh go back and add the two towns. I I just wouldn't want mm -hmm. them to make that a step backward for our submittals to PSD and everything that we're already moving forward on. So this would be post. Submittal. This would be for us, correct? Correct. Yeah, and that's what and that's what Fred said, and that's kind of what I what I said to him too. I said we're we're not going to pump the brakes on the um, on the wireless project. Just you know, there's no reason to do that right now. So he's going to finish he's going to finish that, and then when he has some bandwidth, you know, drum roll, uh, we'll be able to. Uh, well, you yeah, we can move on to that. But you know, if but if we're looking when we're going to. Uh, apply for for the Vita loan. You know, if we lo are looking at you know maybe ch changing the scope or changing you know one of the possible you know deployment areas or something like that, we might want to have that kind of bigger picture completed by then. Very good, thanks. Sure. So I'm I'm going to move that we approve the expenditure of five thousand um, uh, dollars to have Fred update the feasibility study and business plan to incorporate uh, Duxbury and Washington. I'll second. second. Okay, I heard David first this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Any any further discussion? Okay, not hearing any further discussion. Yes. Um, yes. I'm also, oh, Michael. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering, is there a chance we're gonna be picking up more towns after these two? And if so, do we want to charge Fred with expanding the plan more than one more time? We might want to think about getting efficient about that. Um, what what does that look like then? Like an, an open ended um, approval no, for? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we can make a friendly amendment that that we approve the expenditure of five thousand dollars to inter Isle Group um, to to include um, expanded towns, including Duxbury and Washington, and perhaps and one or two towns to be named later, something like that. I, we're, we're not going to go bigger than what twenty two or so. We think based on our geography. So there are only a couple of towns we're considering. In addition, Walden being one, Waterbury maybe, I don't know. Right. So Jeremy, you got? you got a, Jeremy, you got a uh, proposal for $5,000 for the two towns. Let's just mm -hmm. keep it at that and move forward. If there are other towns, we'll, have to, we'll deal with that later. Any other thoughts about this? Is there a rush to get the information now about these two towns? I, I guess I think I, I hear Michael's idea seems reasonable to me if there's no rush to get this information. Because Walden, for example, might come back next month and say that they're going to be in. And then we could say at the end of August, ask Fred to do the work, and then he only has to do the work once. Yeah, I would say the only t kind of timely item that this is going to matter for is going to be the, the VITA application, which we're looking at September at the earliest. So if they come back in August, we could. it's not likely that Fred's even going to be working on this until August anyways. Um, so no, I, I, I don't know that, that there is a rush. On the other hand, you know, we have another meeting in August also. We can also you know, modify the number to you know to accommodate any any additional towns that seem to be coming down the pike uh jeremy you had your hand up yeah i was just wondering if 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 you thought that there would actually be savings for having him do it all at once or if the towns were just too separate and there really wouldn't be much savings in which case we may as well just approve this now and approve the other later so I, I have not run it by Fred about, you know, what would this look like if it was four towns? What would it look like if it was three or whatever? So I asked him specifically for these two and he came back for with 5,000 and that was that. So but I'm ha happy to communicate the will of, of the board. So um, any any other thoughts? I'm, I'm not hearing kind of overwhelming. Chuck? Uh, I agree with Ray. I think we should should just pull the trigger on this and move forward and and take other towns as they come. Okay. All right, Alan. I agree with that sentiment too. Okay. So, um, any any further discussion on this? I'm gonna I'll, I'll, we'll take a vote because this is not unanimous. I'm, I'll, we'll we'll do a roll roll call and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, is there any other discussion? Anybody else want want to weigh on this before we before we vote? Okay. I'm not gonna. So vote, the no. question. Okay. Well, I, that's I, I, my, I let's, let's just do a unanimous vote. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's not do that then. So if anybody would like to do a, uh, a roll call vote, if you would like to vote against this, I'm happy to happy to help you do that. Um, otherwise, we're going to assume this is uh, that this is everyone is on board with it. So unmute if you want to protest. Okay, I don't see any protests. So that we're gonna say the motion passes unanimously.
and I will communicate that to Fred, put that on, in, in his pipeline, which is seemingly ever expanding. It's the, uh, consul <laughs> the, 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 the consultant's dream, right? Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that how that's supposed to work? Okay, uh, financial status and audit update. I have to admit, um, I did not, I was going to like send you printouts of uh, the bank account and this, um, Donations account. I'm still waiting for uh, tech support from um, the donations account about how I can get switched to be the primary admin and get some of the other folks removed from that. Um, no, nothing has really changed aside from um, the USDA reimbursement landed in the account. Um, yeah, two weeks ago probably. Uh, Fred's been paid. Um, I think everything's been paid. Um, I'm expecting to see a, uh, it's actually a $4,500 invoice from um, NRTC coming soon. Uh, that's, I think that's about it. Um, I was hoping um, Greg would be here because he was going to be, he's been talking to the, the person who did the municipal audit for the fire department and he had uh, he was getting quotes and trying to trying to find out what that was. I was hoping to approve that tonight so that we can get them rolling on that. So we have that in our pocket when we go to Vita. But uh, we will circle back around to this later. Okay. Yeah, David. Um, regarding something that happened this month, how many people are making automatic monthly contributions to CD Fiber? Just, just that one just guy. One. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You love them when you meet them, but you are, yeah. But you are all welcome to do so if you would, if you would like to. I can, I can send you the link if you'd like to become a he, making VPR a ten dollars per month TV fiber sustaining. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make you a tote bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's no bags in stores anymore, you might as well be carrying all your stuff in a CV fiber swag bag, right, Chuck? Uh, on the topic of donations, did you ever work out a process to ensure that we were getting tax letters out to people who did donate? Nope, I have not done that. That was uh, something I was going to hand off to the, the treasurer, which is another thing that I still have people to uh, pin down with that and try to get them to be our treasurer, because that would be something that I, yeah, I, something I don't want to really have to do anymore. Do you, Chuck, you know, it's not is as important as it used to be what they since they've changed the tax laws everybody's taken standard deduction unless you give away a whole lot of money yeah i don't think we got any of those um i guess the other question there is do we need more candidates for the treasurer position should we consider trying to do a little bit more of a push out into the community with with job posts again or do you have enough candidates that you feel comfortable right now one of them will stick yeah, I'm I'm pretty comfortable. I I just need to do I just need to, to you know talk to them. I just need to go through and, and and do that step. I've I've not not gotten that far yet, and that's uh, totally my dropping the ball on that. That's sort of a unfortunately it's a self inflicted wound because I'm it's I'm doing the treasurer stuff anyways. But it would be really good to have somebody on board that can uh, <clears throat> that can manage some of that stuff. Um, any any questions about the financial status or audit or anything like that before we move on? Okay. Uh, Business Development Committee report back. Okay, this is David, and we have not met since our last meeting, so there's no the committee has not met, um, but in the interim, um, yeah, some of the committee members have been doing a couple things. One it's the routing around the job description for somebody to be a project manager but the other one is we did get in fred's uh, business uh, plan this last week and it's been circulated in the project team to be approved and sent back and i'll let Jer i know jeremy sent it to public service yet or not but that's sort of and and uh jeremy do you want to distribute it to the whole board or how do you want to handle that i i, I can um i I'm waiting to hear from Michael about some of his concerns about that before we, before I pull the trigger and send it to um, um, public service department. Um, I, I've looked at it. I've, I've played with the numbers. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Michael, do you want to put your commentary in here so I don't have to read your email? 
<laughs> well, um, but most of the board members haven't seen it. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So it so the comments are going to be sort of in a vacuum and maybe not fair to Fred in the report. Uh, I, I mean, I'm willing to talk about it, but then we can't have a full discussion because most people wouldn't have read it yet. So I'm wondering if that's appropriate. So, so I, I guess because a lot of this stuff is also going to be sensitive, that we will probably not want to talk about the actual, you know, the actual contents that are in there. Could you maybe summarize your, um, you know, the concerns that you have about it on a high level? I know you, I know something that you said. Yeah. Or I remember reading that, you know, this isn't ready for Vita. And I guess what I would want to know is what, maybe sort of larger, kind of larger brush strokes. Is it going to take? For for it to be ready okay. for Vita. Okay, so um, it's got a lot of really good work in it. Um, the The narrative um, lays out a lot of choices, a lot of structures, a lot of ways to organize the ultimate um, um, progeny of our work including who owns what and who manages what, and it gives many permutations as to how that would happen. It doesn't make a clear recommendation. Um, there are some hints as to what Fred and his, the co-authors favor, but it's not explicit. Um, it leaves out some models that I think might maybe belong in there, um, but I can't say that we can ask Fred to, at this point, add things that he and his team haven't thought of. Um, and the purpose of it is twofold. One is to inform us so that we can make good decisions of what we're going to do next and in, into the future and guide us well into the future if it's a good business plan and secondly it's supposed to be a report that you could take to a bank and say on the basis of this and you can ask us questions but on the basis of this plan and model would you loan us a bunch of money and i, I don't think that it's formatted or conclusive enough or clear enough to be successful that way. And so I think it needs more work, and yet I don't want to ask the team to do more work. Maybe, I'm thinking maybe what we want to do is take the work that Inner Isle has produced, and then we do more work on it. I'm not sure if that's appropriate or whether we hand it back to them and say, here's here's some aspects of it we think you should refine. Here's some things so I'm speaking really generally so you know but um, to me it to me it isn't a prospectus it isn't um, it isn't something a bank would loan money based on and that's really important and and it's, it's not conclusive enough it doesn't it, it leaves leaves us to think about well should we do it this way should we do it that way and we have we have to reach those decisions before we go to Vita and say, this is what we're going to do. We can't say, well, maybe we'll do this and maybe we'll do that. So those, those are my high level general concerns. Um, and I have lots of detailed ones too, but that takes a lot of work to document and, and, and spell out for people, even in an email. So I, I just don't think it's done. And um, I recognize all the work that's gone into it, but I don't think it's done. And I, and I may yeah. be the only one who thinks that way. I'm not sure in, on the board, but you know, I'm expressing what I think. And 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 I have a new partner. Well, he's not quite a partner, but will be. Um, and he, um, under NDA, I've been sharing it with him so that he, he could. And he, he had independently reached some of the same conclusions that I had. And spoke to them, and we both were saying, "Gee, I agree that I agree, I agree." So we we were both kind of on the same page about that point of view. 
Was that Jeremy? Can I address some of that? Um, so uh, hold hold on one second, Jerry. R Ray's been raising his hand for a bit. So oh, Ray, then absolutely. Jerry. So I guess I'd like to understand uh, the process and where we are in the process. What I think I'm hearing is that uh, Fred has uh, submitted a report. We have not accepted the report. We've not agreed to pay for the report. We've accepted the report. That the business committee is reviewing the report and providing feedback to Fred on the report. And we so we're, getting, we're getting from Fred information that we need that we can make an informed decision. And that before, before that report is um, sent off to anybody, beta, PSD, anybody, that we're going to accept the report. And this board will have reviewed the report. But the main interface is the business committee, and that they're going to do the you know, deep dive into the details to get the information we need. Is that right? I think so. That sounds David. right to me. And so um, if that's where we're at in the process, it sounds like we're still a few weeks away, perhaps. Um, there's a couple of, there's at least a round trip in here. And um, uh, so. Uh, all right, so so David, do you want to, it looks like you have like one thing you want to address about Ray, then I want to give Jerry the, the opportunity. Oh, Jerry, Jerry was first. I'll let Jerry go first, because he's looked okay. at it. All right, go ahead, Jerry. All righty. Uh, yeah, thank you, David. So th there, there's a couple of things going on here um, with this with this very good report and very helpful report. Um, and I, I think I'm very much agree with Michael on most points. Um, they basically left us with an, a decision tree with no decisions made. And it's not up to them to make those decisions. It's up to us. And many of those decisions aren't ripe for the making yet. Uh, they, they, they're they not going to be made all at one time. They're going to be made incrementally as we move forward. Um, so on the one hand, I agree that this is not something you can just turn and hand over to the bank. On the other hand, there are other things that we can do with it as it exists. For one, we have decisions to make. So we're go we're going to have to share this to with 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 folks so that the board can make votes on some very important decisions. But there's there's also been discussions about sharing this with the public service department to be able to show how far along we have progressed and where we are, so that we can be available to also get funding, which is different from going to the bank and saying we want to take out a loan on this. So there's quite a lot going on with this report, and it serves multiple purposes. And I don't think anything that I've said so far disagrees um, with Michael. Um, but I think it's, it's very important that all of the board get to understand the decisions that need to be made. And that, I mean, David has lined out part of this in the timing of the timing of decisions as well. Um, so this is, this is something that I think we will have to share because there will be, uh, a, I believe a number of votes that the board's going to have to make on some very important decisions by two cents and a half. All right. Okay. So Thanks, Jerry, Jerry covered, Jerry covered pretty much what I was going to say, which, I mean, the report was quite a bit of an eye opener and about the decisions that we're going to have to make in terms of operations and management and relationships and partnerships and 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 it really is a lot of things that we're going to have to do in the next you know three to six months uh, in terms of a business and the financial part of it i you know they gave us a model and they gave us their best estimate of um i think the, everybody saw the move the draft model i think that was a spreadsheet that had um you didn't uh, no okay anyway no, it gave us a model that you can vary the um assumptions and i played with it and um i was pretty happy to break it and um run it you can run it down to where nobody subscribes <laughs> and uh, you can see what happens and so that's what i did I, so from that standpoint you know using that information in that model they made their estimate of what what it would take and why it was financially feasible and so from that standpoint, I think we do have something to take to the bank, and probably not in the format that would go to the bank, 
but so the 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 plan anyway i mean jerry is right we were thinking we should probably get a copy of this in either draft form or whatever to the department just so they know where we are relative to what we said we were doing as well as to support what we want to do with the hundred thousand dollars we're going to get in the next two weeks so that was the sort of the thought process behind that right now it's the project review team that has the project has the report not the whole business development committee and so it's similar to the feasibility study so at this point everybody in the project team has looked at it and given it given them their two cents except for michael is still working on written comments and then we were going to at least send it out to the whole board i think i mean i'm going to let jerry decide on this jeremy decide on at what point does it go to the board um and what time is it? i mean the project committee is only really waiting for michael and um and that'll probably be soon so any other yeah michael um oh, i forgot what i was about to say <laughs> um <laughs> So I, I guess if we could submit it, so we we don't get paid by the department until we submit it to them. Fred doesn't get paid until we get paid. So that's one reason we want to move along. Um, we could ask the department, I, I'm just thinking out loud, we could ask the department, can we submit it, but we expect to refine this a little further, but we'd like to show you that basically it's complete and we'd like to be able to get paid and pass it on. I think that's a little iffy. Um, <laughs> I don't think in, terms so. of, in terms of impressing them with how far we've gotten in order to enable them to feel good about giving us other grants, I'm not worried about them being impressed with us. They are impressed with us and we should be proud of that. And I think we're going to get grants if we ask for them and, and write them up properly. So I guess I'm arguing for buying a little bit of time. And then the the other, I do remember now the first thought that I wanted to make, and that is that, oh, it's slipping away again. Never mind. Grab it, grab it Jim, Michael. I'm grab getting it. old. But you know what I do in those situations? Come back. Go ahead, honey is is you just present it to them uh, like uh, over over zoom or whatever and that way they can't take it away and they uh but they see the progress that you've made um and that way you're not giving them an actual deliverable you're just giving them an update that shows that you've done a lot of work you know so that's that's another way to do it is just brief them and don't give them anything. Just an idea. That's possible. Or, yeah. or we can, I mean, we can send it to them and say, this is not our final deliverable, and we just ask for their feedback. The, the, the problem, I mean, I would say the only problem with this is PSD right now, they are up above their, they're underwater right now in terms of the amount of work yeah. that they have with all the stuff the legislature threw at them. So um, I, I, I don't know that we could get R Rob Fish to just do us a favor like that. Um, Anyways, uh, Chuck. My, my perspective is we asked Interile to produce a business plan that is ready to deliver for certain key purposes. And if the project team doesn't feel it's formatted in, in a way that correctly uh, lays out the potential, then I think we do push them to try to, to refine it a bit. Uh, and, and I say that fully acknowledging that there is still going to be burden of choice on us. Uh, I, I think it would be completely unrealistic to have zero choice coming out of what, what the project plan dictates. Uh, you know, even, even with the feasibility study, there was choices we made about potential build paths and, and what we saw as the most viable options for, for sequencing. And so I, you know, I, I, I think Michael, that you, your expectation to not push back on that um, is, is perhaps something you should set aside and, and be willing to give them the feedback. And you know, I, I, obviously there's give and take there, and, and we can only expect them to go so far for a fixed price. Uh, 
and and if it's representative of a lot of work, we should acknowledge that and be thankful for that. But we should also push for the deliverable we need. One quick point on that deliverable, please, if I may. We did not ask them, unless I'm mistaken on the scope of work, we did not ask them for a document that would be presented to a bank for a loan. We asked them to evaluate of the, the, the nebulous concept of uh, cash flow positive. What, what, what was the exact term? cash flow positive over thir three years and evaluate that for us. We didn't ask them for a bank ready loan document. Um, so just, just to put that out there, uh, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure the scope of work does not mention um, taking their business plan and presenting it as evidence for a loan. So, yeah, so I, so I, I, I think you, I think you're right. I, but I'm, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be that guy, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a big mess. Um, I think so. Really, we've been sitting on our hands, avoiding making the decisions. <laughs> if we, if we make the decision and we say, hey, Fred, this is what we are planning on doing, then Fred knows exactly what that report needs to look like. We know exactly what we're going to put in front of Vita. But what I think what we keep not wanting to do is make those decisions. Those decisions have to be made before we do any work on the Vita application. So if we are going to spin up our own, you know, our, our own office and staff it and build our own, you know, back office and everything like that, then we need to decide that quite soon, maybe next meeting, maybe before next meeting. And if we're going to contract out with an operator, we need to say, we're going to contract out with an operator. Fred did an incredible, an incredible amount of work creating two separate models. One model where we are the owners of the of the infrastructure of, of the capital, and then another one where we uh, we lease it from an entity like Washington Electric Co-op. There are an infinite number of permutations of different models. I'm not talking about the numbers that you can tweak and break and play with. Those are those are awesome, but you know if we are if we can sort of decide, and th there's there's not ever going to be a point where we're going to have perfect information. But I think there's enough people who are informed enough and intelligent enough around this board that are going to be able to um, make an intelligent decision about how to proceed from here. And I think really what we're doing is we're asking Fred to make decisions for us that he can't make. So we need to say, are we going to build the fiber? Okay, great. We're building the fiber. Are we going to rely on WEC to build the fiber? Great. Then let's do that. But then we need to say, who's operating it? And we need to choose. We need to choose now, or we need to choose in August or sometime between that I there's 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 no more kicking the can we ju we just need to move um, I saw Philly had your hand up and then Michael yeah um, Jerry I, th I I totally agree and I think that then we need to see that draft as a board uh, relatively soon um, you know understanding that the project committee may still be tweaking some stuff with with Fred um, but I think we've got to be able to start digesting that and, as you said, looking forward to making certain decisions. And then maybe the plan needs to be tweaked again. And even, again, we didn't ask for a, a loan-ready business plan, then maybe we need to invest some more money in making that final tweak. But I, I'd like, kind of like to see the plan. Michael? Um, so now I really remember what I was going to say, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Uh, number one, I think this business plan has less sensitive information in it than the feasibility study did. It doesn't describe locations. It doesn't describe um, strategies that are competitive, particularly. And so I would be comfortable with this circulating more freely than the feasibility study, which really had a lot of competitive information in it. So that's one point. The other point is that, um, so, so now I'm gonna be the bad boy. This, this is difficult. We're all, we've been, this board has been together for more than two years. 
and we really want to get something done. We're, we're tired of being impatient. We don't even want to be impatient anymore. We just want it done now. We want progress. We want something to happen. And yet, I'm going to say, we're not ready to make those decisions. And the reason we're not ready to make those decisions is because we don't know what's going to happen in Bardoff. We don't know what's going to happen with pandemic relief money that's going to come from Congress if it flips. We, it very well may be that multiple parties are going to end up owning bits and pieces of what we want to build in our 20 towns. And we don't know how to organize that without knowing some of those results. Or, or we could set up some contingencies and we could plan that way. We could game it out. But we really don't. Let's just posit that WEC wins some RDOF, Green Mountain Power wins some other RDOF, Filson wins some other RDOF, a couple of other parts, you know, there's going to be, a, and so there's going to be a multiple bidders and not necessarily will it all be one and one block by one entity. And then let's say a different entity ends up getting the competitive grant that Congress sets up. It, how are we going to organize who the owner is and who's leasing from who if we don't know that the pieces we have to work with. And so that now that's going to play out over quite a few months and we can't wait another year. We have to come up with some real strategy to act on. But that's one reason we shouldn't rush to judgment on the questions that are raised in that plan. I think we should say, you know, this one really looks distasteful. We don't want to do it and eliminate a couple. But we may have to leave some flexibility in our future. All right. Thank you, Michael. And this is this is the point where I have to step away, unfortunately. And uh, I want to give Sh Siobhan the next word, hand the meeting off to Phil. Jerry, you are now the Berlin vote. Um, so um, my final comment before I, di I disconnect here is, you know, we want to we want to go after that Vita money and whatever the overall big picture of CV Fiber looks like, that's a, that's a project that we will go forward with, that we'll go forward with without RDOF funding. That's we'll, we, we'll go forward without federal um, stimulus funds or whatever. So let's scope out the decisions that we need to make and choose what that project looks like so that we can move forward with that. That's the timeline that David put together and I think it's pretty clear about those decisions. But I think in order to get something to Vita, in September, which is, I think, what the what the timeline says, we need to make some of those decisions. So I'm going to shut up, and I will talk to you all later. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Siobhan. So Siobhan. I was going to say a very similar thing that we have now 20 towns that we're planning on providing service to, and Ardoff isn't all of them. And I, you know, without specifics about where we might start or where we might go from there we still have we've still we're still committing to providing the service we have we're formally in the WEC agreement now is that a true thing David I see you nodding so we're formally we're we're partnering with WEC WEC is committing to building out lines exactly how that's going to play out we don't know yet we're part of this the statewide CUD thing all of this is completely aside from RDOF. And all of this is going to continue happening and continue swirling aside from that. And the decisions that we have to make are fundamental. We have to decide, are we going to do business as us? Or are we going to contract this whole thing out, kit and caboodle, to some operator and just be their board? We have to make that decision. And that decision isn't something that is going to matter about RDOF or partnering with WEC or any of that because that's that's a foundational decision that we have to make as an organization and I don't I still don't understand why we keep delaying that we don't seem interested in actually making a decision on this point are we going to operate this are we going to hire somebody to operate this if we're going to hire somebody to operate this and we're not going to hire employees and we're not going to be a provider which is frankly where I want us to go then 
we got to start looking at people. We've got to figure out who's going to be our operator, who's going to be putting these lines out. We have to make that decision and we keep putting it off. And I'm two years at this and I'm a little frustrated, a little tired of, we keep saying we got to make a decision, but then we keep saying we don't have enough information to make a decision. What information do we need to make this decision? That's what I don't understand. I don't know what we're missing because I, I feel like I've been ready to analyze and look at things and figure this out, but I don't know what we're waiting for. So I'll stop now. All those in favor of hiring Valley Net say aye. All those opposed, nay, abstain. <laughs> are, 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 you, are you ready to hire Valley Net, Juan? Oh, come on, come on, raise your hand. My oh, yeah. only reluctance with Valley Net is Look. the wireless thing. That is my only reluctance. There you go. Exactly. And it's my wire. only reluctance about the wireless thing is because Michael says it's a bad thing and I don't know enough about it to gainsay him. Who's the backup? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think it's a bad thing. Bill, take charge. No. <laughs> 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 I'm too fast there. Um, this was not warned as an action item, and we don't have a motion um, on the floor except for Ray's motion and second of, of his own motion. Um, <laughs> I withdraw my motion. We do have to come to some conclusion. Um, in order to give some feedback to NRIL and make some decisions about how we want to progress. Um, do we want to have the report as it is circulated and have some discussion at the next meeting? Chuck? Yes. For what it's worth, the report as it currently exists is already now circulated to the CV board uh, uh, mailing list. Um, Henry, you are not on that yet, so I will make sure you get a copy as well. Um, and uh, and Thanks. yeah, I'll get that to you soon. Okay. You wild man, that just right now. Uh, can I chime in? This is Frank Moore. Uh, I I'm not getting any of these emails. Frank, I'm gonna I'm gonna ping you through chat uh, to make sure you get on the list. Thank you. Seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, have Chuck, to are you we need oh, to Chuck. read it. Um, and I'm assuming I'll, I'll talk to Jeremy that we have an item on the agenda for uh, next time, whether it's executive session or not, we can make that decision once we've read it. Um, David, it was my understanding, if I, I heard you right, that the project committee is still going to be communicating and tweaking the report with NRIL. Is that correct? Correct. So even though we have this draft, you may have more information to add by the time we come around to the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Is that acceptable to everyone? Yes. Okay. Hearing no objections, uh, got the thumbs up from, from I, I, Ray works in hand signals. It's, it's great when you're <laughs> on your chart. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll move on um, from this item unless there's any more discussion. <laughs> Hearing none, um, what are we at? Uh, business no communications communications committee uh, report. Chuck, give me two seconds to finish something really quick. Sure. Oh my God, Chuck, you had okay. an hour. Uh, okay, so. Um, Communications committee hasn't actually officially met in some time because we we have been sort of on a holding pattern waiting for some other things to happen first. However, uh, this week something did happen in, in a little breakout group that I want to talk about instead. Uh, it's and, and just I want to preface this with this is not an official recommendation of the entire communications committee. Uh, but I think it's a good recommendation, and so I think the board should consider it. Um, and that is uh, Ray and David and I and Jeremy have prepared a press release to go off announcing our, our planned participation in RDOF uh, as well as the VITA uh, loan program a little bit later. Um, in particular, the RDOF portion of the announcement gives us a great opportunity uh, to caveat that we are going to have to be making these conversations in executive session 
uh, and have potentially having redacted documents starting as of tomorrow uh, because we are forbidden to talk about the terms of bid strategies and so forth. Um, and so uh, we have this press release written uh, and I will distribute it among the board to use in your own communities as you see fit. Uh, but I would like to go ahead and make a motion to also submit this to VT Digger's press release section, uh, which I understand may now come with a $25 fee to post, although when you go on their website, it doesn't seem to have it, so it's unclear to me. So I would like to word the motion as follows. Uh, uh, motion to submit this press release uh, to VT Digger for submission with up to a $25 fee approved to do so. Is there a second? You got it. <laughs> Come on, there's a second. <laughs> Discussion. Great idea. Yes. Do, do we have the so latest copy, Chuck? One at a time, please. Who's speaking? Um, I just was requesting, Andy, if we had the latest copy. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Uh, we do have I, a copy? No, the, the entire board does not have a copy, but I will distribute that right now. Okay. Um, no, I don't want to vote on it. So Let's see what it says. They, I put my email in there. All right, okay, got put, hand up. So, so here, here's, here's my oh, concern. Oh, wait, one, please. Bill, Bill, please run this. signal that you want to speak, okay? Frank, you're next. What about seven days? We could consider that. I, I was looking on their website and I didn't find as clear a submission path. Granted, I've never tried with seven days. Um, and so it may just be my lack of, of knowledge in that in that space. So uh, I'd be happy to try seven days as well. Does anybody know if they carry a fee for press releases as well? I, I could just email it to them. And if they decide to run it or not, it's sort of up to them. OK. Alan? Alan. Alan. Hmm. Alan Gilbert, can you hear me? He looks frozen to me. Yeah. Up, oh, Tom. We'll go to Tom first. Uh, I was going to ask if we can postpone voting on the motion until later in the meeting, so we have a chance to quickly glance over the the document. Sure. Is that nod of head? Is that fine with everyone? We'll go through the next items and and then take this up before we close out. Michael. Um, I just want to make sure that we stay within the the um, confines of prohibited communications, the FCC rules of prohibited communications. Um, we are not bidding in RDOF. We are an advisor in a consortium. For Ardoff. I love the idea of a press release, by the way. I think we should be putting out press releases and getting the word out of all the things we're doing. Um, and I'm, I assume Chuck paid attention to that, but I would like to look anyhow and, um, and, and make sure that we define things clearly. You know, we are not bidders, and that's important, but we're in a consortium that is bidding, and therefore we're confined by the rules. And just quickly going back to something Siobhan said before, we do not have an agreement with WEC. We don't have any agreement with WEC at this time. We have some understandings with WEC, and WEC is in the same bidding consort, same RDOF consortium with us, and we will be reaching, hopefully, consensus with all of our bidding, all of our partners in the consortium later. Um, but we aren't as far along as you described, and that's all. Okay, Fair. Chuck and then Ray. Okay, uh, to address your first question, I do believe we did a good job skirting around the items we're prohibited to talk about. Um, although, again, the period actually doesn't start till tomorrow, but still, we skirted around them anyway to be on the safe side. Uh, Michael, absolutely would love your feedback since you are really kind of the resident art off 
expert, I think. Uh, so if, if we miss something, um, it's worth noting Jeremy uh, did did also weigh in on this heavily, and he's he's pretty well versed in that. Um, so I think uh, I think that part's good. The other thing is we specifically wrote CV Fiber will be part of a consortium spearheaded by the National Rural Telecommunications Council (NRTC) joining. Washington Electric Cooperative, Cloud Alliance, EC Fiber, Vermont Electric Cooperative, et cetera. Um, so, you know, Michael, you also need to decide if you want Cloud Alliance mentioned there or not. Uh, and we should decide uh, if if we are comfortable listing those other agencies, generally speaking. Ray. The text of the uh, draft is in the chat room. You could all read it, take you 30 seconds. Okay. Thank you. Where is the chat room? Da, 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 da. At the top right of your screen, there's a little chat bubble. And if there's anything unread. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, other questions or comments? Yes. I think we need to take right. a look at the post in chat from Rama about VT Digger and being free. We don't have a huge checkbook. Yeah, I, I would push to try to get this categorized under government if if I can, and, and hopefully they'll abide by that. Good. I would think that they would, but. Yeah, they only give you three options to select for. They give you um, um, current VT digger underwriter, government, or other. Uh, and so I would attempt to submit it under government first yes. and, and see where that goes. Yeah. We are a legal, legally, we're a municipal entity. Yes. Right. And we're all listed on Vermont Digger, or at least most of us, I think, are at this point listed on uh, Vermont Digger as, oh, no, I'm sorry, not Vermont Digger, Front Porch Forum as, yeah. as municipal entities. Yeah, right. Okay, sorry. Um, did everyone get a chance to just quickly look at the press release? Uh, Jerry brought up, uh, actually, Jerry, if you want to bring it up yourself, if you'd like. I, I just pointed out that I, I don't think we're actually community owned. I, I'm not exactly sure about ownership here. Um, and I think if you, it, you could just drop that statement and say that we are a communications union district. Right. Without saying that we're community owned, I, I, that I find that a little troublesome. Right. I agree. I think that's correct. Okay, uh, Ken. So maybe I've been I was gone a little bit, but um, the fact that we decided to apply for a four million dollar loan. No. Because it says we will apply for a four million dollar loan in September. And I don't think yep. we've agreed to apply for a four million dollar loan. Right. right. Interesting. That, that, it's a good point. Um, Maybe May. May. Would, would you be comfortable with May? Just remove it. The plan is to apply for the loan. I mean, I don't know. We've been doing this for three months. I don't know why we're Are changing we, it now. Is considering? Is strongly considering? Yeah. Yeah, it's considering. I'd say it's considering. If we don't borrow the money, we're not building anything. <laughs> Jack, we're we're considering availing ourselves of um, of up to four million dollars from Vita as as uh, from Act Night uh, seventy nine passed last year, something to that effect. So the only thing I would add is that um, Cloud Alliance is no longer a member of that consortium okay. and has been substituted by Pair Networks. So Cloud Alliance withdrew and Pair Networks applied and joined. Are we comfortable as a board uh, calling out these other organizations? They are the only, they're all Vermont organizations, but you don't need to. I, I think it shows some strength of the uh, the group. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So where do we start? Before there was a suggestion right. that we defer on this until a couple of other reports. So we still want to do that. 
No. No. Okay. So, uh, Jeremy, Matt. Um, a quick question comment? for Michael. That that organization that replaces Cloud Alliance um, is that also your organization as well? Um, and yeah, what was the name of that again? Pair, as like the fruit pair. Pair networks. Okay. Thanks. Um, it, that that is it, Kingdom Fiber is the DBA of Pair Networks. So the fiber project in the Northeast Kingdom, that's Kingdom okay. Fiber. And Pair Networks is the real name of the company. So you okay. could put if you want to, you can put Pair Networks doing business as Kingdom Fiber, but you know, this isn't a press release about us, it's a press release about C D Fiber. And so right. I don't think you need to do that. No, I'm just noting it for the notes or for the minutes okay, okay. thanks okay so are we okay so just, so just one uh, more thing i did yeah. post i did post the updates we've all just discussed uh in in the chat again so if you want to re-review uh the the points you've all made feel free to do so okay let's take a minute and look at that Go for it, Alan. Yeah, I, I have to tell you that, thanks, David. Uh, having a board review a press release and massage it, it's probably a sign we shouldn't be doing this. It is <laughs> really only dangerous. Only it, is, it, is really, it is really, really dangerous to do. And yeah. I, I also want to say that the connection for me has been breaking up terribly so i've been missing some of the comments and i apologize for that but i can't do anything about it i worry about things like in the paragraph that begins in addition to support its construction plans will be applying for the loan a decision is expected within a month of application and once approved the loan proceeds will allow cv fiber to commence design we can't say that. I mean, we have to have an if in there. It makes it sound as though we know already what Vita is going to do. They're going to give us the money. I mean, it's that, that's a pretty sensitive issue, I think. And and we we really want to be careful with this. Um, and I'm I'm not sure that I'm not sure that review by board is the is the best way to prepare this for release. Um, you know, this is going to be a public statement, so we've got to make absolutely sure this is accurate and sensitive to the interests and the needs of the people who are going to be reading it. And I'm, you know, the the other thing I wanted to ask Chuck, who 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 is the press release intended for? Who who are we trying to reach? What's what's the message we want to get to whom? Yep. Uh, so the initial intent was for a post to front porch forum, um, but we did see an opportunity to uh, word it more like a more formal press release uh, in order to go out to VT Digger as well. Um, now, we could also decide that what we really need to do is break it out into two communiques since they're very different audiences. Yeah, they are different audiences, and I, I, I think, I think they probably should be worded differently. Um, I'm just worried that we're doing something for which we don't have an approval process established, and I think we're floundering around right now, not knowing how we make a decision about what the proper content, voice, whatever of the release should be, and I don't know how that decision is going to get made. And, and part of that, I admit, is the fact that this ca this came together just since the last meeting, and we didn't have time to put together a communications committee meeting. Um, but to your point, you know, I, I think this speaks to a matter of authority, which is uh, the participants in writing this so far were largely Ray, Jeremy Hansen, and myself, with a little bit of involvement from David. And you know, we didn't catch the concerns that have been raised by the board. Uh, admittedly, I think David was in job post land, so he, was, he probably didn't give it nearly as much attention as, as he does other things. Um, and so, you know, I just think it does fundamentally speak to what does the board feel comfortable for who is participating in this kind of approval process? And if it's the communications committee as it stands today, then, then we should make sure the communications committee is able to do that if there are other people that need to be involved in that approval process, maybe it's communications committee plus executive committee, 
then we should determine who that is and, and what that process is. Okay. Um, I, I thought I'm, I'm sorry. Was, I was so, saying, I, yeah, oh. I lost a lot. I lost the last uh, 20 seconds of that. I, I don't want Chuck to repeat it for everybody, but um, um, Alan, really quick just question. Currently, if you turn off, I feel your uncomfortable video, about this. If you turn off your video, you might have more bandwidth available to hear yeah, yeah. the audio. I've been trying that, and it's it's worked sometimes, and not not other times. It's 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 really frustrating for me. I'm sorry. It's 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 nobody's fault, but it's it's yeah. a problem. There might be a way to turn off incoming video as well. I know there is in Teams, but I don't know how to do it here. Yeah. So. No. <laughs> so, uh, Michael. Um, I just, Alan asked a really key question, and that is, who is the audience? Who is the targeted audience? If the targeted audience is government officials, legislators, we say it one way. If the audience is the general public, the intelligentsia that reads Vermont Digger, we might say it another way. And I can't tell from this release who we're trying to impress. So right. I guess I'm not sure. So when I prepared the initial draft and sent it to Chuck, uh, it was the purpose was to <coughs> let people know through Front Porch Forum what was happening what we were doing, that we were making progress. And that's what I still intend to do. Um, uh, so I get the part about the, uh, my view of the world is we've been talking about beater and a $4 million loan for two years. We're going to do it. We're not, not going to do that. We are going to do that. Um, however, comma, uh, I still intend to send something on front porch forum. You're welcome to do so or not. Okay. Tom? I think Alan has a good point that, I mean, for a public release, there's probably, I mean, most companies handle this in a certain formal fashion of, you know, it has to go through a legal review, it has to go through, a you know, the various steps in order to actually make sure nobody's making any mistakes before we send something to the public. And if we don't already have that policy in place, then perhaps we should. Whether we require somebody on the communications board has, or communications committee has to be a member of the policy team or something like that. Um, but we should probably have that sorted out before we get too much further down the road here. Mm -hmm. I agree, and that's that's exactly what I was asking for as well, Ellen. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we can. Uh, and I think in we can the policy committee yeah. deal with this um, when we get a chance to get together. <clears throat> However, we we've spent quite a bit of time on this. Um, I'm wondering, do we in fact even need um, a motion? and a vote on this or allow individual delegates from towns to use this text as they please to inform uh, people in, in each of our own towns as to what's going on. Jeremy? I don't, I mean, given the concerns that have been raised by people, you know, especially by Alan, Personally, I would feel uncomfortable sending something out like this without um, having some sort of a legal review or some sort of an opinion. That's just, you know, I mean, my point of view. I don't know how other people feel about that. I, I don't think it rises to the level of needing a legal opinion. I think it really has more to do with voice and audience. Alan was suggesting. So, is that what Alan was suggesting? Yeah. Let's do something here. Um, Henry? I would just say that um, considering the timing that we might want to consider focusing on the legislature uh, so that we sustain um, their good graces and, and that that's more, that's Pretty important. Okay. Frank? I would really 
rather have board approval before I post this to front porch forum for Williamstown. I, I want the board behind me before I do it. Okay. So, I, does anybody think we're ready to vote on this or should we defer this to next meeting? Can we defer it to the I, executive committee so we don't have to do this again? Please. <laughs> Okay. I think it should so be Phil, deferred to somebody, the full board. Yeah, or the I have a concern. Okay. Um, so I have a concern. I'm going to, yep, Phil, I'm going to, I have to, like, it, it's some, yeah, this, there's a lot of layers to this, but I have to communicate to the community somehow, and much of what we're discussing right now is public anyways, and right. the fact that we've even debated it all is public, I think we're over-engineering this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I do think, um you know, some of us have to use judgment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write an article tonight for the local newspaper, and I'm not gonna get board approval to do it. But it's just gonna be based on our public notes in our meeting notes. I'm not gonna reveal anything that's not publicly already available. Um, and I'm gonna be careful in how I represent it. But you know, I, I don't know that. I think we're probably being a little too. Again, this is like we get too hung up on competitiveness, and we're getting too hung up on this. We're here to represent our communities and a need for broadband and we meet publicly we're under the public meeting and open meeting laws we kind of just have to accept that you know that's what we are we're not really an operating entity until we get a partner that is that can worry about these things in a more kind of legalistic or competitive sense we're overthinking it okay uh ken and then tom yeah, I'm good with everything except the $4 million loan because we just have received the first draft of the business plan. And as Michael's noted, there are a lot of decisions necessary for us to, to, to have a viable $4 million build. Um, so I, 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 that, that paragraph is premature from my perspective. Everything else, I'd, I'd, I'd move it along because I do agree we need to communicate to the public that we are moving forward and I'm proud of the progress we've made. But that $4 million loan paragraph gives me pause because we need to talk about it. What, what, okay. what if it says is considering uh, participating in our $4 million loan, a decision is expected within a month of application and if approved, the loan proceeds would allow. Uh, I softened it in the chat, you can see it. You still have September on there? Nope, that's I'm looking, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Tom, do you want to go ahead while we're? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I agree with Andy. I mean, that's the kind of organization I want this to be. Um, I'm just, I mean, those of us who are a little longer in the tooth on this have, have seen issues come up with previous delegates who, you know, would try to use things in a way we wouldn't expect. And I just don't want to run us afoul of that morass again so yeah anyone else jeremy is there possible it, it would it be an idea to have some distinction between um like official communications from cv fiber as an organization versus communications from delegates does that solve any of these issues you know something like where you know if i put out a notification i say you know as cv fibers plain field delicate i'm posting this information and then it's it doesn't at least in my mind it might sort of insulate cv fiber from me making a mistake and saying something that's wrong in the post just a thought i think there's some truth to that alan you have any comments on that I yeah, don't see Alan, unfortunately. I should be there. Am I there? Yes, you are. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah. Can you you can hear me? We can. Yes. <laughs> this is awful. Can hear me <laughs> this is really awful. I I think it would make sense for a clean redraft to be sent around to the board in the next one to two days. And and for Chuck to ask for approval that for the language that he's used, uh, we're we're in a really difficult area. You know, for most boards, a board member cannot speak 
for him or herself about an issue that is really an organizational issue. There's supposed to be agreement among either an executive committee or the, or the whole board or a communications committee about, in this case, a, a, some sort of a public release of information about really critical issues because you want it, you want to be presenting yourself as a unified body. Um, and you run into problems when you have board members saying different things. And if you have reporters who are really interested in finding a good news story, if they see a difference between the way I talk about something and the way Phil oh. talks about something, that's where the story is. So I, I just think we want to be careful to have a consistency in what we're putting out as news about our efforts going forward. And that's why I think it's worth a couple more days for maybe Chuck to do a redraft. And you, Chuck, you, you're welcome to call me or we can set up a time to chat and see if we can smooth some of the language out and just make sure there aren't any pitfalls in there that I think could cause some attention we don't want to get. Second. <laughs> Who was that? That was that was yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, um, let me let me just raise one other question. If we're sending around um, a document that serves as a press release, and we're essentially voting or approving it outside of a meeting as an unwarned agenda item, it seems like we're in, almost more hot water than you know, the individual who is not representing the board's point of view, but representing only themselves. It says, hey, I just wanted to give you, you know, community members an update. Well, I would say well, that Percy. I, I would say that Gilbert who is below me and up. Gilbert is saying you're really overthinking this one, Phil. Well, I'm uh, just I'm looking at, you know, Public meeting. I, I, Bill, I, I would like I, to make an amendment that, that Alan and Chuck look it over and that we pre approve the um, sending of the release after they have worked it out. Well, we have a motion. Uh, well, Chuck took it as a motion, uh, although I'm not sure Alan actually made that. Did you actually make a motion, Alan? I will make it now to be the content that you expressed when, uh, when you repeated <laughs> what I was thinking. Second. <laughs> Jeremy, that, that. Um, what, Jeremy, you can say. <laughs> Jeremy, you can say that I move that Chuck and I work on this release, have it sent around the board for final pr approval before it's distributed. How's that? Well, is, is it final? Except that we can't. We're just we can't. final. We can't, we can't act we're, on it in email. We we we. I amend that motion that we authorize Chuck and Alan to reach the final language and send it out. Seconded. Okay. Is there, oh, okay. There's a second on the amendment. We're going to we're gonna vote on the amendment. Wait, Can we have um, a question okay. first? I've been so, on five boards, and the only one on all five boards who can speak for the board is the chair. This is a different board, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you're, you're technically right, but I think with a press release, if it's voted on by the board, it's um, it can be issued. So we have an amendment. We have a second. All those in favor of the amendment? Wait, so, sorry. Oh, just I'm I'm like way <laughs> confused about the notes. So is this the motion that Alan made to have Chuck and Alan? make the language or is it the motion that Michael made to have Chuck and Alan reach the final language and then send it out? Um, this started with a motion from Chuck. Michael's, Michael's is an amendment to Alan's motion. So first we're gonna vote and we're gonna vote on the amendment. And if that passes, then we're gonna vote on the amended motion. Get yes, back here, already, you already, already, David just <laughs> left. Ah, Ken just left. Everybody's sick. Another beer. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. All those okay. in favor of the amendment. Aye. Aye. Those opposed. Passes unanimously. I'm going to move right on to the motion. 
All those in favor of the amended motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Passed unanimously. We're done with this item. Just one, one last no. thing, uh, Jeremy. If you could just put me in as abstaining, uh, abstaining from both of those because I wasn't in the whole conversation, so I cannot. Good. Contracting with a project manager. Manager, whose item is this, David? Please, thank you. So I drafted a job description for project manager. It's been circulating and I'm, I think it's, I don't know which committee has gone circulated. I've gotten comments back from a few people, but not a lot. They're all good comments to simplify it and to clarify that we really, we don't know what we're gonna be. This is really for this six month period, a five month period and to help us get through all the things that the bill requires us to do and to help us deal with all those things in the uh, business plan that we're talking about. Um, so from that standpoint, um, that's where we're at. I haven't circulated it to the whole board. I will do that tomorrow. And um, the idea is if people want to post it on Front Porch Forum, they could do that. Or if they know somebody who is interested in the position to let us know, they should send us a resume. That's at the bottom of the job description. And um, I have one person who's already semi-interested in it, so that's good. Somebody's pretty qualified. Um, but we're going to get money August 1st, and we should probably try to get somebody here August 1st. Um, I don't think we're going to find the perfect person for a five-month no. contract, but you never know. And uh, take any questions. Alan? David, can you please, in the fourth line, change this will be the first employee of CV Fiber? Yes. Yeah, that's gone. Otherwise, we're going to have the Department of Labor coming after us. For no, no, yeah, that's gone. It's a contract. Yep. So maybe something like this will be CV Fiber's first hire or something like that. Something that um, gets rid of employee. No, don't, don't use hire again because it, it implies yep. Yep. first contract. Yeah. Contract. 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 First contractor or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Any other comments, questions? Josh. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to just just reiterate that if, if we do any such language that, that even uh, references employee or hire or anything like that, then we do have to go back to insurance as well. Yep. I know. Got it. Yeah. Good. Anyone else? Moving on. Uh, oh, Phil, 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 yeah. can I just say, David, in number eight, the project manager will be responsible for, I think where it says Central Vermont Supervisory Unions, that's no longer the proper term to describe what's been happening out in terms, yeah. I think if you right. change that to Central Vermont School Districts, lowercase yeah. school districts, yeah. it's going to be clearer to people what you're really yeah. after. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Point. Okay, now I really am moving on. RDOF responsibilities, is that yours too, David? Ooh, RDOF. It's a delegation of RDOF responsibilities. Well, I mean, it could be anybody. I mean, it could be you or me, I guess. Um, we left the last meeting without somebody who's gonna be representing us, the board, on the RDOF process with WEC and our NRTC. Um, it, there are people, you know, right now already working with WEC. I mean, it's Michael and, and Greg, and I would I would like to be on that group. Um, so there's three. I don't know if anybody else would like to be part of the RDOF process, but the more the merrier. Well, How maybe not. Laws. What? How many can we have before we've run afoul of meeting laws? Ah. Huh. Alan, <laughs> it's not a number. Anything plus one that's designated as a committee, that's a sub whatever, is technically support is a subject. Well, no, you have to have a majority of the members meeting for it to be a meeting. You can have if you have a committee of five and you only have two people who are talking to each other, that's not a meeting. You still might be subject to disclosure of the record of what you talk about if there are notes and stuff. But you don't have a meeting if you're not a if if you're not a whatever the quorum is. The quorum is usually a majority of the members of the committee or the board. So I, I don't think that's a problem in terms of being a meeting. 
you can communicate on business related to something you're dealing with. Okay, we so just have I'm... to be careful for the business development committee here because you you, you may end That's up with a I'll quorum say. of business development committee folks. That's if you have so too many. I'm going to make a motion. Okay. And I can't second it, so somebody else is going to have to. No, I'm can't. I'm blacking. I'll <laughs> okay. second it. I, I move that the board appoint David Healy, Michael Birnbaum, and Greg Kelly as presiding members pertaining to RDOF responsibilities who have the authority to make decisions or representations in the consortium, that's the word consortium, that we are a member of for the purposes of advancing our interests in this endeavor. And that this is a subgroup of the board, not a subgroup of the business development committee. So they can add other people if they need to without running afoul of the committee rules for public, what you call it. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Do I have a second? Chuck? No, sorry, I'm waiting for discussion. Okay, I'm going to second it then. Is there any discussion? Chuck? Yes. So my only concern with that is a three-member committee hits quorum with two of them chatting, right? It's not a committee. It's a subgroup. They're representatives. They're representing the board. Okay, okay, yeah. I see. Um, I'll just add that last meeting we discussed the possibility of this, and we decided that there would be some mechanism for feedback to the board as to what the representatives are doing on behalf of the board because we don't want the board to be in the dark we just don't want to run afoul of the RDOF prohibited communications rules so um, let's just assume that in that already long-winded um, motion it includes that there will also be um, some form of reporting back to the board by the by the representatives. Which makes it a subcommittee. <laughs> and essentially, in all practical purposes, it really yeah. does. So, I mean, I guess the question I have is, why do we need more than one person? Because I think it's a little cleaner just to delegate a person to take this responsibility. It is an administrative function on for us, and you're not nearly into no. this kind of gray area of... Bed strength. Cross training. Somebody gets hit by a bus. <laughs> yeah, you know, point their back up. David, will you just take over chairing for me for a minute? I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Ma Michael, you're going to tell us that you're going to withdraw from the committee because you don't need to be on it. Um, it's not a committee. I don't need to be on it. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. fine, but, but I do think it's important. I, I have to disagree with Andy. Um, one person is not sufficient representative because there are going to be some difficult decisions to make, and one person shouldn't be making them for the board. There should be some discussion. But so if they're hopefully the, right, but if they're yeah, this is yeah, I'm poof, boy, not on board with any of this. We got to think. We got to think about this. Like it's a lot more straightforward to say, okay, here we're we're going to take one or two individuals and delegate an administrative responsibility. The minute you say it's multiple members, and then they have to report up and everything, it's a subcommittee. And then I don't want, you know, the delegation thing always is a little. That's a great fine line too, you know. You do want people doing work, and then what? Well, how do you distinguish between a policy decision and, and what's just you know kind of executive or operational? So this is, this is just one of the struggles we always have, but um, right. this is tough. Yeah. I would be much more comfortable with saying, here's two people, just go do your best and come back and tell us before you do anything important. Right. There's gonna be some really delicate decisions to make. Okay. I'm friendly to a motion to amend. So David and Michael, 
instead of including Greg, and then we've got two people delegated for cross training purposes. I, I but well, in in fact, I'm already a member. Of, my company's a member of the consortium, so I don't so, need to be. I mean, I will be representing CV Fiber's interests for sure, but I don't need to be officially a, representing CV Fiber in that um, capacity. What? How does this, even, Michael? How does this work? Like, what? What? I guess you know you've got a multiple entities in front of. Yeah, this is this is really getting into a nebulous area. It's um, it's hard can, hard can for I me to see where I am have any vision into that. Um, is Phil, could I or David? Are you? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Um, so there, there are 59 members of the consortium, and we are the four or five Vermont members of the consortium. And there's only one bidder, and that's NRTC. And NRTC is going to bid on behalf of each of the members of the consortium as they are guided by the members of the consortium. The five, member, five Vermont members, ideally, will reach consensus on what they think is best for all of us. There may be some discussion, there may be some dissension, but probably consensus will be reached. And it's important that enough people are knowledgeable enough of what the board wants to represent the board when discussing it with the other Vermont members of the consortium. I wouldn't trust me, I wouldn't trust David, I wouldn't trust Greg alone. We need to have more than at least two, I would think more, um, making those decisions on behalf of the board. Because there are gonna be some questions. Um, we wanna bid here, no, we wanna bid here. Oh, well, how are we gonna divide this up? Uh, oh, maybe we shouldn't bid at all. Maybe you know, things like that are gonna come up. And do you want only one or two people to have the power to make that decision for the board? I don't think so. I don't think we were saying that. No, I wasn't saying that. I was actually, yeah. Keep going. Go ahead, David. You had a no, I question. Right. I mean, if we have to make a decision that's major like that, we got to come back to the board. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Henry, was that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, um, yeah, I just wanted to relay um, that I've been in quite involved and actually met with the director of the RDOF program last week regarding Duxbury and our eligibility and the mismatch of their data with our data. And, um, you know, I've been attending the FCC meetings and the data meeting is pretty important because that's for the next round of bidding. And uh, we need to get them on you know, E911 data instead of uh, 2010 census data and other things like that. So I just like to contribute to the RDOF effort um, uh, because I've been doing a lot of work in that area. Ray. Did Jeremy uh, Hansen express any interest in being a liaison to this group? Not that I have heard. And nothing, David, he hasn't expressed anything to you? I am. No, no, Michael, no. okay. So, Michael? I, I agree that, that um, the representatives should come back to the board for guidance on major policy decisions in regards to the RDOF auction they are not going to be able to come back to the board when decisions have to be made during the bidding process when there may be an hour or two in which to make decisions and so the people who are representing us who we are not even going to be we're not even taking cb fiber is not taking a position to be um, an ultimate winner we're taking an advisory position but we want to advise the other Vermont members of the consortium to choose certain census blocks, to bid at certain levels, to 
withdraw from certain ones within the time frame of the auction, which has long strips and then really short ones. And so on a policy level, of course, the board should approve a general position, but there's been, I don't think one or two people should be making those this big decisions of we're bailing from this group of blocks because the price got too low or we're going for all of them no matter what it goes to. That kind of decision should be made by more than one person. Right. <laughs> um, make a substitute motion that uh, David Healy, Greg Kelly, and Jeremy Hansen be appointed representatives to the NRTC consortium as our representatives. End of motion. So I have who seconded, David? Michael. Yeah. Michael, okay. Any more discussion? I um, I thought I heard Henry kind of volunteering or expressing a desire to be involved with this because of his experience. Is that true, Henry? Sure, but I, I, I think, you know, what I was, heard Michael saying is, is it, I was thinking it really boils down to two groups. One is the initial group between now and October, and then there's the group in October that's sitting there like in the stock market going, yes, no, yes, up more, lower, south, and that, you know, I don't need to be in that group. I just want to be in the first group that's, you know, um, coming up with that strategy and um, so maybe if we broke it into a kind of uh, study group and a bidding group uh, under RDOF, then there would be two different sets of uh, skills that could be used and, uh, and authorities that could be granted or responsibilities that would be had in each group. Okay. Anyone want to comment? I don't think this is Jerry. I don't, I don't think there's anything in the motion that stands that stops Henry from providing input. I, I think the I think there's there's uh, <clears throat> lots of ways that that you can provide input without necessarily being identified as as part of that triumvirate. Yeah, yeah it's fine with me. I don't I don't care. The, the only the only thing that we decided last week was that in order to um, protect ourselves and other members of the consortium from an accusation um, of violating prohibited communications is that we wanted to keep the number of people narrow and only have them as, be able to report to the board in a general fashion. Um, and so an informal addition to the group might be awkward. Why don't we just add Henry to the list? Ray, are you willing to um, amend your motion to add Henry to that list? Does anyone else want to be on the board? On the group? <laughs> are, you, are we sure? Okay, then I'll add Henry to the list as a friendly okay. amendment. I think I had the second, didn't I, Jeremy? I was going to ask that because my fingers are getting a little sore from all this. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I had the second, so I'll, okay. I'm willing to uh, make that change to any okay. other discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Closed. Passes unanimously. Any abstentions? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. Okay. Henry's abstaining. Okay. Okay. Well, we're coming so down this, to the first part of the meeting. The, this is for, that was for the amendment, the correct? Amendment. We haven't actually voted oh, on. No, no, it was a friendly amendment, so it was all it was a, it was a friendly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, approval of uh, July 7th meeting. Wait, wait, no, no, no. We, we added another oh, thing to this agenda item. What was that? And that was, that was a quick, dis quick, um, discussion of our current knowledge of who's participating in RDOF in the ah, state. You're right. Uh, um, and, and also uh, discussion, and we might want to table this, discussion of 
um, appointing someone to respond again because of short notice issues to line extension proposals in exactly. our territory. Right. Yeah, we'll That's table that. Yeah. No, we'll table sure. that. That's going to come uh, up in the next week or so. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Someone else is already doing line extensions, and sooner or later we're going to be asked. Okay. So now I forgot. What was the first part of this? Oh, what's going on as far as uh, yeah, right, Ray's laughing. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on as far as uh, art off? Um, I I can I can take a stab at it, and I, and I think Jeremy knew something I didn't know, but he's gone. Um, yeah. So we know about our own consortium. There's EC Fiber, CV Fiber. Washington Electric, Vermont Electric, and my company, Pair Networks. Those are the Vermont members of this 59-member consortium. Um, we were under the impression until yesterday that under the leadership of Filson in Maine, another consortium was being formed with Green Mountain Power, Belco, and the municipal utilities under VIPSA, VPPSA. Um, and yesterday we found out that in fact, there is no consortium. Oh. That in fact, Tilson is going to bid on its own or is, is, is red filling out. You can't say they're gonna bid. We don't know who's gonna bid, but they are um, submitting a short form on their own and they're filing agreement statements with those other parties. Oh, and I left out uh, some Southern Vermont CUD joined with mm -hmm. them. And any case, um, community broadband CUD is in negotiations as of today, still in negotiations with Tilson for another side agreement. We don't really know. Uh, now I'm going to editorialize. We don't really know if the FCC will accept this kind of structure from Tilson, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, okay. But they have decided not to act as a consortium. Now, I don't know about any other entities in Vermont. I'm sure there are other um, entities that will be bidding, but I don't have any direct knowledge of any of them. You know. So, a lot of the national companies might be. There are some out-of-state companies that might be bidding in Vermont, and I can name a whole bunch of them that I think will be, but I won't mm -hmm. because I don't know it. And I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. Mm -mm. Nothing. Okay. Okay, that's that. That's that. So now we need to designate someone to respond regarding line extension requests. Is that what you're saying may come um, come up in the next week? Yeah, Michael. Well, line yeah. extension, yeah, line extensions and any kinds of broadband projects funded under the CARES Act coronavirus relief fund money. Um, this De Department of Public Service is, is obligated to let us know and ask our opinion. They are not obligated to follow our opinion. It's the it's the commissioner will make the determination. But if we feel that something is going to hurt the business, future business case of, of our CUD, we're within our rights to say we prefer that that extension not be granted or that project not be funded. So we have to have some people representing us on short notice mm -hmm. when the department gives it. There will be only seven days, I think, to respond. So it, it will be between meetings. So we have to have somebody or s several people. Okay. David? I volunteer. Okay, that sounds good. Anyone else interested? What are the I thoughts? So we have just one person or two or three or? I'll work well, with you, David. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> okay. I can too if you want me or if you need three. You want at least two because someone might be sick or out of town or whatever. That's right. Okay. 
Would this also possibly I, I require an emergency meeting of the board sometimes? I mean, if if if, if you know, the representatives if, deemed it's really threatening, yes. But if it, if it's kind of a no-brainer, no, right? Right, right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, so I'm 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 what, I hate to be not a motion. We're <laughs> accepting your um, volunteerism. Uh, for the three folks that are going to uh, do this work on our behalf. Oh okay. God, that has that has to be a motion. That has to be a motion. I would object to that. Okay. If you're delegating authority to people, like you've got to make that a motion. Okay, go ahead and make it. <laughs> I'm not interested in making it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so. <laughs> But I mean, you can't just del you can't say, okay, these people are going to make decisions about you know, which is kind of they're performing a delegated regulatory function without it being right. a motion of the board. But, so I mean, so if you want, so, so who's all right, willing to do it? Who's willing to do you. the work? Is that something, David, or David? David, well, David yeah, well, all we have to do is make a motion that says those three are going to do it. That's easy. You can make the motion, Siobhan. You'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Go for I, it. So, <laughs> I move that is we appoint yeah. Yeah. David. I could volunteer as well if you want to add me or not. I don't know how many people we want in this. Right. Jeremy, Matt, David Healy. Greg and Jerry, was Greg and on Jerry, Jeremy and Jerry, Jerry, Dan, okay. yeah, Jerry and Jerry to yeah, uh, respond great. to in, in a timely matter, no, promptly respond promptly to requests from the state regarding line extensions. Were other projects funded under the coronavirus relief fund? That got it. Okay, <laughs> is there a second? My I'll cat second. seconds. I will. Okay. Who's Ray seconded it? I think. Okay. You got Any it. further discussion? All 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 these these are, are, how will these requests come in to them to be able to make that decision? Henry, did you have a? Yeah, so um, when you say other, that also includes the connectivity initiative. Um, yes. Projects as well. Yep. Yes. To be more specific, I guess. Okay. And to Henry's question, I believe problem. that it would the information goes to the chair. Is 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 my my guess is how that would work? The information would go to the chair, and then the chair um, could 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 pass that information along. That would be my guess. Or. The department could be informed of who the representatives are, and the department could directly respond to the representatives. That could be good too. Yes. All right. Any other comments, discussion, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. Okay. Tom. Who's abstaining? Tom Fisher. Okay, Tom. Did you get all that, Jeremy? I think so. So it was unanimous with Tom Fisher abstaining. Right. Okay, we'll move on to approval of July 7th meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion? Mo I move to approve the July 7th meeting minutes. I'll second. Nope, good. Are there any questions or corrections? I think that they came around with a set of corrections um, already. Yep. <clears throat> any, no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll stay and I wasn't able to attend. Okay. Motion passes. Whew. Round table. Uh, let's see. We'll. Uh, Ray says no. Let's go. 
Let's start with you, Andy. <laughs> with who? You, Andy Gilbert. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, thanks everybody, and, and thanks for the patience. And um, I do think I look forward to reading the business development plan. Or, and I do think we need to think hard about what we really are as an organization. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jerry. Nothing bad. Thank up. you. Nothing. Okay. Um, David. I don't have much. I agree with Andy. <laughs> okay. Chuck. Nothing that. Thank you. Great. Ray. Yeah. Alan Gilbert. Yeah, this was a really difficult meeting for me to attend just in terms of my connection. So we got to build high speed internet in rural areas of Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second. <laughs> awesome favor. Move to uh, amend. Michael. Thank you, everybody. Tom. I'm good. Thanks, everybody. John. Josh. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted, but I think he said pass. Um, Josh. Um, nothing more than that, just thanks. Okay. Henry. Henry? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me um, or, or uh, letting me join as a member. And um, I look forward to working with so many uh, like-minded people and, and helping to uh, move this effort along. Thank you. Sharon? I just really appreciate you all as a group of people to be working with. And I am having a, a wonderful time. And I appreciate your patience with me. Um, so y'all stay safe, really. Jerry? I think I'm on there twice. I'm not sure why. Oh. Oh, you are. Right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you. Jeremy, you're well, actually, for Alan, you know, I call in on the phone line. I don't use the computer for my phone connection. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that might help, Alan. Okay, thanks. That's a good suggestion, Jerry. It's good. Thanks. Because my internet's not very good. <laughs> Jerry, I just wanted to say welcome, Henry. And uh, on that note, Chuck, have you added Henry to the board list for when I send out the draft minutes? Okay, perfect. Good. I have nothing more to add. Um, and thank you all. <laughs> This was a long, this one was a bit of a slog for us. It's not always like this, Henry. Um, but thanks everybody for all the work and um, we're, we're getting somewhere. And um, are you just waving at me? Uh, Shimon, you want, want to say something? I'm saying goodbye. Would you oh, okay, just say goodbye, Gracie? Bye, Gracie. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.